Right, looking at the transport of this Fostex 280, uh, we've got a two motor system. The motor in here is the EG 530KD-2B. Uh, so that's the same Machibishi motor that's in, for instance, 424 Mark II, Mark III, 488. So the B means that it's mounted from the back. It does up to 3,200 RPM, so suitable for three and three quarter inches per second. There's no dual speed control on the 280, so yeah, I guess it must be three and three quarter inches per second only, much like Tascam 414 Mark II and Tascam 244, two examples. The real mechanism, there are cogs, gears, what's the appropriate term, that go between these two real tables. So there's no idler tire in there, so that's good. There's no rubber part to replace there. What I am noticing though is if I move that out of the way and turn that with my finger, that feels really stiff. What I'm wondering is actually whether there is grease on here that has become gluey. So, I mean, I'll go on analysing this in a minute, but I will definitely, you know, that feels the same. I'm going to be taking those off. There's a little clip there, so these will come off, give them a clean and put on fresh grease. Likewise, this doesn't feel very easy to move. Um, I feel like this little 12 volt motor here is probably struggling to turn that. So you can see there's a little plastic clip here and a little e-clip here. I'll remove those, take those off and lubricate them as well. And hopefully that will allow all of this mechanism to move freely. The retraction and raising of the magnetic heads and the pinch roller. I'm not sure how the switching's working. I guess there's maybe a little solenoid or something in here once we take this plate off, but you can see that there's some moving gears, cam and stuff. Well, we'll be able to see it more clearly in a minute, but that seems to be being powered by teeth at the bottom of this flywheel. Okay, good news, there's only one screw to remove. Bad news, there's kind of springs and cams and gubbins that we need to deal with. So this screw here, note that there is a little bit of spring sitting in a crook here. So you're going to remove this brass looking screw with a long shank. Unhook that bit of spring from there. Pull that along, see how these two little tabs come out of a slot there. Tip from this side and there's like a little tab into the space there. So when you move that out of the way you're going to see something like this. I think I might have just disturbed that slightly. Basically that little arm there, which is held under tension by this spring, is going to be sitting somewhere on top of this big cog cam gear guy. Basically when this goes back on you're going to need to get this arm of the spring to come around here and hook back under there because I was saying earlier I wasn't sure how the retraction and lowering of the head and fast forward and rewind is controlled but it must be to do with this solenoid here that's a gear arm that's changing the gears which are being powered by this flywheel, being powered by this capstan motor, and then that's raising and lowering the head and also changing what position the centre of the wheel mechanism is in. Okay, while well, I was gibbering into the camera there, all the bits on there fell out, so if you're in the same position, this is how they go back together. This white part is at the bottom. Uh, next in goes this spring, the straight arm at the bottom, and then that straight arm slots underneath this little white tab here. And then there's this part that goes in the center there and it's, it goes inside that black plastic part so that there's a bit more of a snug fit for that screw when it goes back in. And that wants to be turning. So you see that black stripe on the white arm? It's gonna be hitting up against that black plastic post. You see it there, I'm tapping it, my finger. So that wants to be set on like that. Right, I've just tried this a couple of different ways and uh, this seems to be a way that's workable. I'm using masking tape, you could probably use just sellotape or something, but I've just got a little tab either side of the flywheel so that the belt is sitting on the flywheel with a loose bit off to the right hand side near where this capstan motor pulley is going to be. First thing we do is get this tab to fit into the slot there. You can see I've had to tip it slightly like that. Now at this stage, I'm gonna reach in with a pair of tweezers. And there's no really easy way to film this, but just trust me, I'm just grabbing it and pulling it so that it's 
going over the pulley. So now hopefully you can see that the belt is on the pulley. This hole lines up with that brass tube beneath it. We can drop the screw in there and tighten it up. We can now remove tape. Hopefully that belt is going to turn freely. Yeah, that's turning okay. Then we need to get the arm, the end of the spring. Between this pair of tweezers and my thumb, I've managed to get that to come around in this direction under this plate and appear here, like that. And then I'm hooking it into that little recess there. Now I said earlier I want to get these reels and this mechanical part of this reel mechanism lubed up so using tweezers you could probably use um, a flathead screwdriver or something but somewhere these are going to have a, a little split in them a clip at the top here. Yeah. There I hope you saw that but yeah there's a little break in that clip anyway um, and that will allow us to lift up. Yeah I mean that's really yeah Gluey grease feels really sticky and horrible. So I'm just going to use uh, isopropyl swab to get that off. See that orange stain? That'll be the gluey grease. Probably going to need some spray isopropyl or something to get into the shaft of that. Um, I won't film it, but it'll be the same process with this, and I'll bet you, because that feels really stiff as well, that that's also got gluey grease in it. Um, this seems to come off due to a e-clip here, so I'll try that off. I've got my thumb on top of it so it just doesn't ping away. And there's a washer under there. Oh, it's pinging away. So oh, there's another thick washer in the centre of that a little spring inside in case we lose that. Note that. And a spring underneath. Maybe what I was feeling of stiffness earlier was the internal friction of this motor. I'll tell you what, let's assume that the, the motor is okay and it was the stiffness of these reel tables that was causing the problems that I had with fast forward and rewind. If it's still a problem after lubricating those and reassembling them, then that will be the subject of a uh, video later on. The uh, only thing to say is that the lubricant that I'm using is thanks to my friend Robin's recommendation. I'm using this stuff called Molly Coat. I've previously used uh, silicon grease and it's been alright, but I was about to run out, so I thought I'd try this stuff. He's using it a lot of synths and tape machines and so on and says it's good. So, thanks Robin, assuming <laughs> your recommendation works. Only other thing that might cause performance issues would be the pinch roller, but it looks fine to me. I'll probably clean the capstan and the magnetic heads with isopropyl. I won't put isopropyl on the rubber. If that were dirtier, then I might just use like very diluted detergent that you'd clean dishes with, or maybe just hot water, but actually it looks fine. I'm pretty sure that that's the same pinch roller that's in Porter 1, so you know, if I wanted to remove that, then I could shiggle. Oh dear, what did I just do there? Where's that attached? I'll need to watch back at the footage to see exactly how I managed to take that off. <laughs> okay. Since I've accidentally taken that off anyway, I'll just show you this. Um, you can push back and forth on the central pin. Sorry, it's hurting my fingers because um, so many sharp edges on this. But now I'm gripping that with another pair of needle nose pliers. I've gone pop back and forth and you see how that's pretty much recessed there and sticking out that side. When it's sticking out that much, then you grab the central pin and pull it out. There we go. I'll put it up on the screen anyway, the, the name of this part. I haven't had to buy any new ones for a while, but certainly at one time they were plentiful and relatively cheap on eBay and Amazon and stuff. That part number, but then you would just put in your replacement one, slide it most of the way in, like that, and uh, click shut. I'm used to pinch roller arms where there's a clip here, you know, there'll be a groove on the mounting post for it. This one doesn't seem to work that way. It's a bit of a mystery to me exactly how it's staying in place, but it does seem to. So push that pull through the lower of the two holes. And then you want, sorry, the, the spring here to sit on this protruding bit of metal. By the way, that cam back there that lowers and raises the heads needs to be in such a place that the magnetic heads can go all the way down like that. And then once you've got it half in, 
turn it so that that protruding piece of metal is catching that spring. Then line up the hole in the pull at the top and push that down. At that point it doesn't come back off very easily. That will raise and lower it, um, but you know if you were to do it like that, it's not springing back into place and that's what this spring underneath is doing. It's got a little protruding arm, hope you can see I'm pointing at it now. Compress that spring and turn that arm so it goes behind the base of this spring here. So if I grab that, the end of that spring, push it down and under and lift up. Now pushes that back into position like that. And if you need to remove it again, yeah, you just pry underneath it. I mean, it doesn't come off unless you really pry it, but yeah, that's how it works if you need to replace that. 